The Great War was one of the first major historical events of the new century and would have long-lasting effects on the nations of the world. In Western media, the First World War is often seen as this right here. Now, unless you are European, you would be right to point out that the region pictured is not the world. World War II is described much more as a global spanning conflict, and although there are certainly regions which get far less coverage than others in the topic, World War I's battlefields outside of the West are ignored harder than the eldest child in a family of ten. In the Far East, the rapidly industrializing Western competitor nation of Japan is, for our purposes today, said ignored child. For Japan in 1914, World War One was the, quote, one chance in a thousand years, end quote, to further grow into the imperialist powerhouse which it had been building itself up to be. Japan would study the war, the tactics used, the weapons, and so on, beginning in 1915 through the Rinji Gunji Chosai Inkai, or Temporary Military Study Committee. The Japanese Navy also had their own study group made in autumn 1915, called the Rinji Kaigun Gunji Chosai Inkai, or Emergency Navy Committee to Study Naval Affairs. The Japanese economy would be boosted as exports to allied nations increased by 400%. They built military and merchant ships, as well as supplied weapons and materials to the battling European states. Japan would participate more directly in the conflict, examples including helping end a revolt of Indian troops in Singapore on the behalf of the British Royal Crown. So today, I would like to pull the overlooked stories from the opposite side of the globe into the spotlight of World War I European-dominated conversations and discuss Japanese involvement in the Great War. Our story begins more than a decade prior to the start of World War I. In 1902, Japan and Great Britain allied in the common interest of Pacific territorial gains. Their alliance came about mostly as a means for joint defense against Russian expansion in Asia, a region which Great Britain was having difficulty containing, and one that Japan had joined other European nations in cutting up. On June 28, 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand of the Austro-Hungarian Empire was assassinated, an event which would lead to the domino effect of Europe erupting into war. Following Germany's invasion of the neutral nation of Belgium, Great Britain declared war on the 4th of August 1914. For Japan, entering World War I was done due to a combination of different factors, but certainly one was because they wanted to stay loyal to the alliance obligations they had with Great Britain. And so, Japan went to war. Japan saw the outbreak of war in Europe to be their one chance to achieve what they had started in 1868 with the Meiji Restoration and Reforms, a period where the Japanese feudal system was overthrown and replaced with the old imperial system, and a time of rapid socioeconomic reforms in the form of modernization and industrialization. Specifically, Japan's imperialist agenda in the Far East was seen as more obtainable now that Europe was engulfed by flames. A German victory was believed to increase the threat of expansion in Eastern Asia. An engagement with Germany now would mean upholding their alliance with Great Britain, continuing to prove to the West that Japan was a great power, and continuing to achieve Japanese expansionist policies, all while Germany was distracted. Great Britain requested that Japan join the war on August 7, 1914, pointing to a clause in the 1902 Anglo-Japanese Treaty stating that both nations would be in mutual support of the other. Japan would agree, but first attempted to alleviate expense by getting Germany to concede East Asian territory. Around mid-August 1914, Japan gave Germany an ultimatum to remove forces and surrender territory in China and the Pacific. Germany left Japan on red. On August 23, 1914, Japan declared war on Germany, and then, on August 25th, did the same with Austro-Hungary. Meanwhile, China was neutral in the war, being too weak and divided to mount much resistance. They were soothed by a British promise to return the German-held territory of Tsingtao if the war were to go their way. Tsingtao, located on the Shantung Peninsula in East China, was the flower of the German Empire's Asian colonies. It was home to Germany's East Asian squadron, a naval force. It was commanded by Vice Admiral Reichsgraf von Spee, 
and consisted of six armored cruisers in the summer of 1914. However, by August 1914, all ships were out on routine missions, leaving only a minute navy in its place. This navy consisted of four gunboats, one torpedo boat, a German cruiser in port which was being retrofitted and was not operational, and the Austro-Hungarian Kaiser Franz Josef I-class protected cruiser Kaiserin Elizabeth. The Kaiserin Elizabeth was armed with two long-barreled 15cm and six short-barreled 15cm guns. Germany had prepared for a siege at the port, lying mine barriers and strengthening fortifications against sea and land attacks. Germany could muster a measly 3,500 troops, 2,500 reservists, and the 324 Austro-Hungarian sailors there at the time. The battle at the port of Tsingtao was a joint Anglo-Japanese operation. Between 20,000 and 25,000 Japanese troops and around 140 artillery pieces under the command of General Kamio Mitsubishi Somi moved on the German-Chinese port town. Britain had sent troops in support, but also as a measure to keep an eye on the proceedings. 1,500 troops commanded by Major General Nathaniel Bernardson were sent. The bulk of the armed force were made up of the 2nd Battalion, the South Wales Borderers, and a small detachment of the 36th Sikhs. The Anglo-Japanese naval force began a blockade on the 27th of August, and six days later landed their expeditionary forces. The Japanese Navy, for its part, sent a sizable fleet of 68 vessels, which included six cruisers, 31 destroyers and torpedo boats, and, for the first time, a seaplane carrier. British warships also joined in the fray. Japanese forces landed on September 2, 1914. One Japanese destroyer was sunk the day of the landings by a German torpedo boat. The British landed at Laoshan Bay and garrisoned in Tianxin in northern China before meeting with Japanese troops already engaged in a siege at Tsingtao. By the end of the month, the Japanese had established a line of siege that completely cut off the peninsula from its hinterland. Japanese warships and land-based heavy artillery started shelling the town. Now, completely unintentionally on my part, this battle has some fascinating aviation history. Japan is credited for the first deployment of seaplanes for battle. They potentially, as in I could not find much evidence beyond a few sources, sank a German mine layer sometime during the conflict. This is among performing many other impressive tasks. Of the Japanese fleet, one stood out. It was the transport converted seaplane carrier Wakamiya, which carried four Japanese-built French Maurice Fairman MF-7 biplanes. The first airborne mission of the battle occurred on September 5, 1914, when an MF-7 was sent on reconnaissance and reported back that the German naval force was not present. On September 6, Japan launched an MF-7 with hand-dropped bombs, who attacked the Austro-Hungarian warship and a gunboat. Neither ship was hit. AA fire, that is to say small arms fire, did not prevent the MF-7 from safely returning home. MF-7s would, over the course of the battle, perform scouting and bombing missions. A British officer noted, quote, daily reconnaissances, weather permitting, were made by the Japanese seaplanes, working from the seaplane mothership. They continued to bring valuable information throughout the siege. The mothership was fitted with a couple of derricks for hoisting them in and out. During these reconnaissances, they were constantly fired at by the German guns, mostly with shrapnel, but were never hit. The Japanese airmen usually carried bombs for dropping on the enemy positions." End quote. The Wakayima was damaged by a German mine on September 30th and had to undergo repairs for a week. The seaplanes, though, continued their support. Another British officer recounted, quote, The seaplane corps and three Henry Fairman 100-horsepower seaplanes were in consequence of the damage done to the mothership, landed at the base already established at Liaoshan Harbor, and this proved eminently satisfactory, end quote. Germany would not sit idly by and take this abuse from the air without response. German pilots would engage numerous times in the air with Japanese aircraft. One Japanese plane was shot down by German pilot Lieutenant Gunther Pluchot. Pluchot claims to have shot the plane down using his parabellum pistol while flying his Taub aircraft. He went on to conduct one air raid on Japanese naval forces, dropping two bombs, which both failed to reach their targets. He reportedly also attacked ground forces. By his own account, Pluchot used makeshift bombs, 
which were made from coffee cans filled with dynamite and scrap metal. Overall, Japanese MF7s sortied 49 times and dropped 190 bombs. During the battle, Germans scuttled their ships. The Austro-Hungarian ship was also destroyed, but not before her guns were removed and placed as shoreline batteries. Despite being heavily outnumbered, the generous amount of food, medical supplies, and artillery ammunition allowed the Germans to hold their position for over two months before surrendering. The Japanese launched their final attack sometime around October 29, 1914. Japanese shelling proved very effective against German resistance, and supplies were running critically low. Japan broke the last defensive line on November 6, and German troops surrendered on the 7th of November. Territory was surrendered on the 16th of November, 1914. The Anglo-Japanese forces suffered some 2,000 casualties. British forces lost 12 men, and 53 were wounded. The opposing force had over 700 killed or wounded. German and Austro-Hungarian POWs were held in Japan until finally being returned in 1920. Immediately outside of the battle, Japanese naval forces managed to keep German naval forces eastward and away from colonies of the West. In doing so, Germany was pushed back to the Atlantic. On December 8, 1914, the British Royal Navy defeated the German East Asian Squadron at the Battle of the Falkland Islands. The British Major General spoke highly of the Japanese commander. He had used tactics which were plays from the siege of Port Arthur during the Russo-Japan War. Artillery would be used to soften enemy positions so that Japanese troops could slowly advance their entrenched positions. This traded time for lack of casualties, as Japan would move into good positions to deliver killing blows. Interestingly, the battle was almost like a precursor to what the First World War would look like. The battle saw tactics and weapons such as trench warfare, air raids, nighttime air raids, extensive use of artillery, and the effectiveness of machine guns. All things which were not yet prevalent in Europe, but would become famous in Europe during World War I. Japan went on to gain additional territorial privileges in China through its 21 demands in May 1915. The ambitious foreign policy was leaked to Japan's allies, who became cautious of their friend, who attempted to block them from further exploitation of a colony. Another thing commonly only mentioned in passing are Japan's acquisitions of German Pacific Island colonies. Japan would take the German colonies of the Caroline, Marianas, Marshall, and Yap Islands. For Japan, these islands were of strategic importance to expand their influence in the Pacific and future influence in the Philippines, while also keeping the U.S. a safe distance away. Japan worried about U.S. naval dominance in the Pacific and how that would affect their future interests. Beginning in late September 1914, two Japanese task forces, led by Vice Admiral Yamaya Tanin and Rear Admiral Matsumura Tatsu, departed for the German colonial islands. By October 14, 1914, Japan had taken control of all strategic German islands with no resistance and no casualties. The Japanese Navy was also busy giving support to Allied nations. They provided escort for troop transports and merchant shipping traveling through the Pacific and Indian Oceans heading west. They did this to relieve stress on Allied navies. The U.S. in 1917 secretly allowed Japan to patrol the waters off Hawaii. Most escort missions in the east were about pursuing and patrolling for German raiders. German auxiliary cruisers wreaked havoc in the Indian Ocean. Japanese volunteers contributed to Allied war efforts as well. Since 1890, three-year trained nurses served in the Japanese branch of the Red Cross. In September 1924, Japan was informed that nurses were needed. Between October and December 1914, three groups of one surgeon and 20 hand-picked nurses were sent on five-month missions to Petrograd, Paris, and Southampton. Their work received high regards, and host countries requested 15 additional months. Japanese volunteer airmen also fought in Europe. Shigeno Kiyotake was a Japanese nobleman and accomplished pianist who joined the French Flying Corps in December 1914. He was credited with two confirmed and six unconfirmed victories against German planes. He would be recognized in France as part of the mythic group of aces and awarded the 
Order National de la Légion d'Honneur, one of France's highest honors. These volunteers would share their experiences to the great benefit of Japan, becoming engineers or advocates for the new technology. Isobe Onokichi was cited for exemplary military qualities in the squadron by demonstrating his aggressiveness in combat. When he returned to Japan, he wrote the book Soro no Tatakai, The War in the Air, emphasizing the importance of military aviation. Official Japanese intervention in the war in Europe occurred toward the end of the war. Great Britain had requested for direct Japanese support in Europe since late 1914, but Japan stayed neutral to the idea. In 1916, when they were asked again, the new Japanese foreign minister hinted at a way for Great Britain to swing Japanese support over to their side. Under the condition that Great Britain recognized their territorial conquests, the new foreign cabinet would consider sending ships in direct military support of the war effort. Alongside this diplomatic achievement, Japan thought it important to learn from a long-range, long-term naval deployment. By early 1917, to the end of the war in November 1918, Japan sent a squadron of between 15 to 17 warships at its peak. Altogether, around three cruisers and 12 destroyers served in the Mediterranean. Rear Admiral Sato Kozo arrived, along with the light cruiser Akashi, and eight destroyers to Malta on April 13, 1917. There, they escorted 788 Allied ships, protected 700,000 troops, and took part in 34 engagements of German and Austro-Hungarian submarines. More than 7,000 sailors who would have drowned owed their lives to Japanese rescue missions. For example, on the 4th of May 1917, the troop ship Transylvania was hit by a German torpedo. With the help of the destroyers Matsu and Sakaki, around 3,000 of the nearly 3,300 persons on board were saved. The special squadrons did not sink any submarines, but did defend against attacks and conducted rescue missions for shipwrecked sailors. This all did not come without a price. The HIKMS Sakaki took a torpedo in June 1917, but managed to sail back to port. 59 sailors were lost. Great Britain rated Japanese naval professionalism significantly higher than that of the French or the Italians. The Japanese Special Fleet was commended for its, quote, good seamanship and greatest rapidity of action, end quote. The Japanese learned a tremendous amount about anti-submarine warfare and even brought back several German U-boats for study. Finally, there is a very controversial campaign which would bleed out into the interwar period. Japan tried, in a joint effort, to take control of eastern Siberia from Vladivostok to Lake Baikal. The effort lasted from 1918 to 1920 and was a dismal failure. A culmination of coalition forces pulling out, no friends being found in the area, and unrest over the unpopular war due to economic inflation making life at home hard, a revolt that had to be militarily put down and had the Prime Minister resign, were all factors which contributed to the embarrassing loss. Nearly 1,500 Japanese servicemen lost their lives in combat, and 600 soldiers died from cold or disease. The Japanese Treasury spent 600 million yen on the venture. Japan's casualties were minor compared to other nations in the war. They received tentative recognition for their expansion by European allies in 1917. This was due to the fact that European nations were concerned over U.S.-Europe relations at a time where U.S.-Japanese relations were beginning to sizzle over Japanese expansionism. At the signing of the Treaty of Versailles, Japan stood tall as a member at the table, though they felt cheated and ignored. Japan tried for legal annexation of old German territories in the Pacific, but was halted by the United States. A compromise was struck, giving Japan de facto control of German colonies, but not legal annexation. The world was changing and becoming a US-centric one, whose beliefs were counter to that of Japanese imperial interests. Japan was further ousted by the Western world and not given equal treatment in their diplomatic efforts. This can be seen in their League of Nations equal treatment proposal being ignored. Finally, Great Britain cut ties with Japan over time starting in the early 1920s, and so they turned to Germany 
as their new European ally. All in all, this entire section of World War I history is unjustly overlooked. A passing mention in the best cases, and a footnote in the worst. Important and fascinating things are present in this history. It isn't bare. It is frustrating when history is present, and yet you are told that something just happened because uh, it just happened, and then get detailed explanations for everything else. I believe words have meanings, and if we are to continue to call World War I a world war, then we should make clear why that is the case. Learning about Japanese involvement in the war can give vital context to imperialist history in Far East Asia beginning in the 20th century, vital pre-war history in Japan, and let the fallen in a conflict so often remembered in the West as a, a Western-centric conflict not be forgotten. Hi there! Thank you so much for watching this video. I'm glad you got to this point. If you're confused about why there aren't any planes, except for the one case where there were a little bit of planes there, don't worry. I'm always confused. I'm right there with you. I want to do uh, the, the plane content and a little bit of historical content, but I would rather kind of focus on some smaller things that may have some bigger importance uh, factors in them, or just things that people say are true and are 100% not true or not as exciting as they want it to be or what have you. I want a good mixture of both, just because as a historian I can only do so much in one little section of history before I just get bored of that and I have to move on to something else. Um, also, I just want to teach and everything. Anyways, this has gone too long. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you want to see something specific down in the comments, I guess. But other than that, well, goodbye.